Companies like Gearbest.com send me some pretty cool stuff every now and then. After I told them I was getting tired of only reviewing keyboards, of course, I have a few interesting things to show you in future videos, but I never could have expected to be able to make a video on 3D printers. Seriously, huge thank you to them. Now I was just going to do a regular review, but then something else magical happened. A subscriber sent me a DIY 3D printer kit. Have I ever told you guys how amazing you are? Seriously, thank you so much Riley for sending this to me. Now I'd never built a 3D printer before. I didn't even know that was a thing, but I figured the same way I was able to build my computer and a couple thousand more, so too this should be a piece of cake. And just as I thought, my super geniusness kicked in no problem. I've already done it on all of mine, but uh, just kind of wedge the, the screw in there and just kind of pop it out. Okay, so it was a bit more difficult than I expected, but I did end up finishing the printer under pressure on stream by following a simple YouTube tutorial. Now after building the printer and using it alongside the one from Gearbest, the question becomes, which is the better idea? If I'm looking into getting a 3D printer, is it smarter to buy it pre-built or should I build one myself? And this is what we're going to be answering today. So one question I know I'm going to get is, how hard is it to build a 3D printer? And it always kind of annoys me when people ask me that. I would never buy a 3D printer kit if I knew it was going to be easy. The reward is being able to build something that I can use. And as you use it, you think, yeah, I did that. If you've ever built your own computer, you know what I'm talking about. But in the case of this 3D printer, it ends up being a very valid question. See, I put about two hours a day into building this printer, which then took me four days to complete. And that was just building it. I then had to calibrate it, ensure it would spit out a print, which took another three to four hours to do. In all, building this took about 12 hours, which does feel rewarding, but could also be something to think about if you want to grab and go. Now, I'm not saying that my time is the average, but as someone who was new to this, I figured you may come close to that as well. Now, I did hit a few snags along the way. This particular 3D printer is the TiVo Tarantula, and as I was building it, I made a few rookie mistakes that were pretty easy to make, and did cost me some time. For example, the Z-axis here was installed a little crooked, and as I was using it, the whole bar dropped off. What are you doing? Oh. <laughs> so that extruder you guys were talking about, I'm going to uh, go ahead and fix that. One second. The wires here also have to be connected to this circuit board and they fall out sometimes, leaving me confused wondering why my printer wouldn't turn on. There were other things that slowed me down, but most of them were small user error things. For example, these need to slide in. So they need to What? Yeah, suffice to say, it was a bit tricky. Either way, I am one person who can say that I've built a working 3D printer, but other than bragging rights, what else does that really give me? So let's move on to looks. One thing you'll notice about the TiVo Tarantula is that it's an ugly mess. Now I can fix a lot of this cable management, but it'll never look as good as the Annette 3 right out of the box. The power supply kind of just has to hang back somewhere as you print, and I'm afraid to move it just in case the cords that I mentioned earlier just come undone, which happens every so often. The front panel still isn't attached to anything but cabling, which makes it very easy to pick up and tamper with, but also doesn't help the messy look. The filament just hangs there as well, and though these are things that I can resolve by making things with the 3D printer, it's just kind of annoying. Now you may ask, why do you care about that? It's not like the cables are impeding airflow or anything, and that's true, but I'm always worried about them potentially getting in the way. Now again, like I said, I could fix this. I could wrap them up with zip ties, but some of these cords do have a tendency to detach from the spot that they're supposed to stay hooked up to, which is really annoying and kind of the reason I haven't tied them down. It just makes it easier if they're loose to fix them, as opposed to the Annette 3, where the cables come managed and none of that is a worry on your mind. Another thing about the look is the Annette 3 comes with a box which makes it easier to pack away. The TiVo Tarantula is much harder to pack away and I actually have no idea where to store this thing. Up next is the quality of print. I've been harping on the TiVo a lot and I feel kind of bad because I don't think it's a bad printer when it comes to doing what a 3D printer does, it does it well. The TiVo Tarantula has jammed on me once or twice, but I mostly blame the filament used more than the printer. Everything I print looks really nice and compared to the Annette 3, they do practically the same job. The TiVo Tarantula offers a decently bigger base which gives you a lot more room to make larger prints. 
As for the tweakability, the A3 seems to have more options to work with than the TiVo, allowing you to adjust the proportions of your print straight from the terminal. Now, one thing you'll need to know if you're getting into the Annette 3 is it comes with this strange plug which does not work in my house as I don't live in China. All I had to do was grab my Magic Xbox cable though and the thing worked like a charm, so if you don't have a spare power cable laying around, you may want to pick one up for this thing. Barry, you're really making pre-built 3D printers look good, but there has to be some sort of con, right? What is the one thing that pre-builds do wrong? Why is it always better to build it yourself? Wait a minute, I got it! Price! Pre-builds are always more expensive, and that's what makes building something yourself better. See, this annoys me because I think the same way. I would never tell someone to buy a computer over building it, as you'd get a much better deal if you just build it yourself. Especially with the feeling of accomplishment you get when doing it, but compared to the A3, the TiVo Tarantula shows me that 3D printing is just a different world. If I go to Gearbest right now and look at the selection of 3D printers, you'll mostly see 3D printers of the same size cost more if you have to build them. If you're going for a big name brand or larger 3D printer, then sure, it's gonna cost more, but it's just so surprising to me. Not only did the DIY kit take me 12 hours to fully set up, had me going through some rigorous issues, prints just as well as the pre-build, gives me a little more space but costs almost 60 bucks more? One thing I can say is that I now know how to build a 3D printer, and for me, that's something that I'll never give up. But for someone who just wants to get a 3D printer, the TiVo might be a hard sell. Both the TiVo Tarantula and the Annette 3 can be purchased on GearBest.com for pretty decent prices. I'll put a link for both in the description as well as a link to their other 3D printers just in case you're curious. I also hope that if you're wanting to get into 3D printing and you're looking to build one that it goes well for you. Let me know if you beat my time, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't try this at home, kids. If I do this wrong, I could kill myself.